Hi, I'm Mary Beth Quinn, and today I'm going to paint this painting right here. It's called Artifacts of the Heart. While I talk to you about something that took me years to learn, and that is how to sacrifice what you've already worked on for the good of the painting. Seems easy, it's actually very hard. It took me years to even really discover that that was one of my problems and obstacles. So you see me starting here on just an underpainting. The one on the right there that I'm, I'm painting over an older painting and that is the one that I will be working on throughout the video. But right now for this base coat, I'm just killing two birds with one stone and getting two canvases taken care of with the base coat at one time. So this idea came up for me because I had someone comment the other day about a different painting saying, how could you bear to paint over the base coat? Because it was quite beautiful, she said. And I started thinking about this in depth because this has been an area in which my evolution of thought has been quite significant. Years ago, I really had trouble taking a painting as far as it needed to go because of this. I had a very, without even understanding that I did, I had a very utilitarian view about I had put in this time, I had painted this painting, and even though I didn't like it, I had an aversion to keep painting over it. It was a little bit of being frugal with the paint. It was a little bit of being frugal with my time. And a, a large part misunderstanding the process, misunderstanding what my job was. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how I feel about it now because it really has made such a huge difference in not only the outcomes of my work, but also in how I feel about my work and how I enjoy what I do. So here you see, just to get to the technical part, you see me adding a lot of just random things here. This is always what I do on the base coat. I've talked about it before, but I look at it very much in two stages. I have the generative stage where I just generate elements that I can work with. It's sort of like throwing everything you've got in your pantry out on the counter. And then you decide from there what is the perfect thing you want to have for dinner. So it's from this abundance of choices on the canvas, I will begin evaluating, which is the evaluative stage. And I, I begin making decisions. I begin deciding what I'm going to keep, what's going to get covered over. But I have discovered that if I can stay in this generative place for a really, really long time, that I get better outcomes. So I wanted to thro throw this little clip in here. It's me tearing up an old paper painting because this is where I'm getting a lot of my botanical features from. I just repurposed an old painting that I loved and I'm going to use those botanical figures along with my mini layers of collage. So you see me starting in earnest. I'm still throwing on a lot of really bold, sort of chaotic papers and marks. It looks all over the place and that's on, that's on purpose. I don't know what will show through until the end, but I really try to, to put on everything that I'm attracted to, everything that I think might be a fun element or useful. And I don't think at all at this stage about composition. I don't think about how I will use them. It really is more like play. I like that, so I'm gonna put it here. And I just go with it. 
Now, even this can be challenging sometimes because that's just how our brains work. My brain wants to step in and say, well, what's this here for? Well, what are you gonna do with this? How are you gonna solve this problem? When really I'm nowhere near the problem solving stage. But it used to be that I didn't understand that and I would start problem solving so early that I backed myself into so many corners that there was nowhere to go. I was just trying to protect everything. And so I, it just locks you up. You, you have nowhere to evolve into. I hadn't yet learned that willingly sacrificing things is really how you move forward. Taking your attention and your attachment off of specific things, trusting the process, and just trying to get into the flow and move forward. That is where you're able to allow the painting to develop, and even in some cases to guide you and let you know where to go. The point at this stage is really just to add layers almost with the intention of everything being covered over. Now there will be some things that show through, but if I try to decide at this stage what those things will be, then I have already put obstacles in my way. That upper left corner there is actually from the original painting from years ago that I painted over with the underpainting. That little part shows through and somehow it makes it to the final painting. But that was not something that I decided at this stage. Hi, I know these videos can go a bit fast sometimes, but if you're interested in this process, I've created a class called Introduction to Collage, Learning to Paint with Paper. You can go at your own pace and I'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in this process that I use of layering these transparent tissue papers. So if you're interested, I would love to have you join me. At this stage, I am just moving forward. That's my only objective, is just what paper do I wanna put on next? One of the things that's hardest about this concept that I'm talking about where you just, you trust the process, you don't worry about what you're painting over, you don't try to protect things, is you can just feel lost along the way. I've gone through this so many times that now I just tell myself you're right on track. You're feeling lost right now. You know this is, this is a stage of the journey. And I don't tell myself anymore or let my brain tell me that it truly means something has gone wrong because it really doesn't. It just means I'm at the stage where you feel lost. It's a legitimate part of the process. So I'm still, I don't know, midway in just adding all of these different tissues and trying to figure out where the main colorways are going to be, the color paths. I think I've gotten a lot of the that darker blue and now I'm trying to figure out where I want that mint green to show up, how much of it to show up. I want everything to blend and run from one thing to the next. That's why I'm using this, this paint right here. I have sort of a, an ice blue or gray sort of color and I've put a lot of the glazing medium in it. So it's very transparent and I'm just blending areas together. You can still see the paper underneath. I'm just using that thin glaze of paint to tie things together. Now I've got a darker one. I'm adding some dark focal points to try to just balance out the, the lights and the darks. 
and I'm just moving forward. I think really looking at the process of painting and here in this medium that, that I've chosen where I'm working in layers and working in transparent layers. So what makes the look of the painting is actually a lot of layers working together. All of this has really forced me in some ways to practice some very important concepts that are really just part of the creative process. One of them being that everything is evolving everything it's the nature of life itself we have the seasons we have every species on the planet has an evolution process throughout its lifetime so that seems to be a theme of the universe really and why would I expect the creative process to be any differently why would I expect that I put down a base layer and that's all that's required. It's actually the complexity of life and how it blends together from one version of itself to the other that makes it so amazingly beautiful. Why would I expect that it gets to be more of a formula as a as opposed to a discovery or a becoming. When I look at my own life, for instance, there's been no part of that that has been a formula. There's been no part of it that's been predictable, really. And especially, there's been no part of it in which I have been allowed to know what's coming or to decide beforehand and dictate where it goes. That just isn't how we develop. It's not how lives happen. So I really tried to begin focusing on that. How does life work? Because then, then I know how this painting works. This seems to be a constant of the universe. This is about participating in the process, participating voluntarily. And I think as I have decided to participate voluntarily, it's meant a lot of just deciding to get comfortable with it. And, and there's the other thing that I've really had to accept. And that is, there's a lot about the creative process that is not comfortable. So when I hit those places where I feel lost or I feel like it's not going well, I don't like what I see, I can know that's normal. I'm in the right place. This is exactly how it goes at this stage. So making my peace with this process allows me to actually have fun in the discovery of this. And a lot of that has to do with just allowing work that I've done, maybe the day before or the, the day before that, allowing it to just get covered over in the process. It doesn't mean ever, and this is the big part, it never means that what I did before wasn't worth it or that it didn't have a purpose it absolutely had a purpose because it brought me to the idea that I'm enacting right now and I probably would not be able to be here without that other layer this is a really challenging thing I think for someone who's creative to realize that it's all expendable until it's not. And just because it's expendable 
it's, it's expendable to the whole. It doesn't mean that it truly means nothing. It means that it's in service of the whole. It's not there to be showcased or protected or important in a separate way. It is there as part of the process. Some of these layers are just there because it was part of the process. And I think that's why I love doing this collage process because frankly, I, I need more of this mentality in my life. It helps me when I can understand that the work that I do or the time that I've put into maybe certain relationships or certain situations, those things may not turn out the way that I want them, but they are all in service of the whole and nothing is wasted. This is a concept that I really want to live out in a real way and I practice it when I'm painting even if I'm not consciously thinking about that. It teaches me on an emotional level to use muscles that I'm not used to using. And that's always an advantage, always. So this little area here in the bottom left corner, as you saw, I covered over it to a large degree with some tea bag paper. It was too much. It was not working. This was one of the decisions that I started to make. That area was bothering me. And so I began minimizing it and covering it up. And it helped. I wanted to soften it. I wanted to bring it back. And that tea bag paper with no pigment on it is a great way to do that. So when I've begun to accept this and realize, oh, this is just the way that it works. This is not me struggling with something. The struggle is all mine. I'm struggling with the process. I'm not struggling with the painting. When I can really begin to think in those terms, it's a game changer. It makes my experience of what I do entirely different. And I'm available to the process. I'm available to be more creative. I'm available to flow with where the painting is going as opposed to me feeling like I'm responsible for every little decision along the way. I get to participate. But to participate, I now realize that that means getting attached is not an option. Staying in the flow, staying available, that's where the best work comes from. But it's a balancing act. I won't lie about that part. It's, it's not easy and that is the art practice. When I'm painting, I am just as frequently practicing these concepts I'm talking about as I am any skill I might have with the brush or with placing the papers. all necessary to make it work. This internal element, the internal process, is always at play. And when I realized that that's where my real work was, that was where I could pay attention to what was happening inside me and change what, what was happening on the canvas. Then I was hooked. And that's true of everyone. Our impediments, the way that we hang on, the way we think about our role in the creative process, the way we talk to ourselves, how kind we are to ourselves in the process. 
all of these things are playing out on the canvas, whether we know they are or not. They're playing a role in how tuned in to good ideas we are. They're playing a role in whether we decide to quit or keep going. So they're extremely influential in what happens every day in the studio. That's why I pay attention to them. So after all these layers and all of the layers that I've covered up, here's what the end result is. And they were all necessary, every one of them necessary. So here's some close-ups. So you can see what's really going on on the surface there. I love those finishing crayon marks. Just so much fun and so much fun to look at. Well, I hope that you enjoyed watching this painting come to be. Here is the base coat on the left and the finished product on the right. I love to see how similar they are. If you will look in the description, you can find the link to find out more information about my collage process and the class that I have created for that, as well as a link for a free list of my favorite art products. I love art products. And if you would like to sign up to be on my list of information about classes I create or my artistic and creative tips, you can just follow the link in the description as well. Thank you again for spending this time with me. It's always a joy.